Chapter 2661 Nollis chuckled deeply and pulled Daisy into his arms. It's okay. After all, our babies will be born in summer. Daisy caressed her distended stomach with a smile on her face and said, Summer, huh? I wonder if they're Taurus or Gemini. He kissed the top of her head and said, Either is fine. Meanwhile, at the Kong ports, Waylon chose to take their wedding photos in Cameron's hometown. The photography team that followed them helped many celebrities take their wedding photos. They were professional, but they charged high prices. They took their wedding photos in Monte Jade, Hulan, Mahogany Town, and Cosbay. They did their outdoor shooting in Crest Moon Bay, Lover Pond, and Bridgeport Island. They would change their attire for each location, and they were all branded and custom made in different styles. From morning to afternoon, they went through all of the sites one after another and took almost a thousand wedding photos. Cameron was so exhausted that she threw herself on the bed after they returned to their hotel. I didn't think taking wedding photos would be so tiring. Waylon pulled open the curtain and turned around to look at Cameron. He smiled and said, You've done well today, Cam. She sat up and said, I wonder how the photos will turn out to be. He walked to the side of the bed and squatted in front of her. As he helped her to take off her shoes, he said, Don't worry. No matter how the photos turn out, I'm sure you'll look good in them. I don't think so. There is a chance that you might look better than me in the photos. Just like our marriage certificate. I look so ugly on it, mumbled Cameron. Waylon raised his head to look at her and said, you're not ugly. As he massaged her ankle, he asked, does it still hurt? Not anymore. I just feel a little tired. He chuckled. I've never heard you saying that you're tired when you're fighting. Cameron was stumped. That's different. As soon as she finished speaking, her stomach growled. She touched her stomach and said embarrassingly, I don't know why, but I get hungry easily recently. Waylon chuckled. Of course, you get hungry easily. There is another little fellow inside of you. I'll go order some food. He rose to his feet and called for room service. Cameron walked up to him in bare feet and hugged him from behind. He paused for a moment and turned his head around. What's wrong? She rested her chin on his shoulder and said, Thank you for shooting our wedding photos here. I like it. Very much. Waylon turned around to hug her. Really? She nodded. Although I don't have memories of living here. My father grew up here, so I've always wanted to come here once. Waylon picked her up from the floor. Well, as long as you like it. The night fell, and the night market in the Kong ports was lively. Just like in the movies, there were colorful signs everywhere, and it was crowded with people. Waylon held Cameron's hand tightly as they slalomed through the crowd. He was walking very slowly and protected her behind him so that she wouldn't get pushed by other people. Cameron was attracted by the food around her and kept licking the corner of her lips. Can we eat that? He frowned and replied, no. Why? There are so many things that pregnant women can't eat. I'm so sad. She sighed. Waylon laughed and said, there is something that you can eat. He brought her to a popcorn stall, and Cameron's smile froze. Popcorn. Seriously. Waylon bought a packet of popcorn and handed it to her. Why don't you try one? She popped one flake into her mouth, and he asked, What do you think? Is it good? Not bad, she replied. Waylon chuckled. He took over the packet of popcorn and placed one flake near her mouth. Chapter 2662 Cameron ate the flake and said, Not bad. You have the talent to be a butler. Both of them walked side by side, feeding popcorn flakes to each other. Although Cameron could not enjoy other food, she was still very happy. Cameron. When Cameron heard someone call her name, she turned her head around to see Minzy walking out of a restaurant. Cameron was stunned for a moment and looked toward Waylon. Minzy did not expect to run into Cameron and Waylon here in the Kong ports. She walked toward them and asked, What brought you guys here? Um, we're here to. We're here to take our wedding photos, Waylon said as he wrapped his arm around Cameron's. Shoulders. We're going to have our wedding next month. We need to take some wedding photos, so we picked this place. Minzy lowered her head and smiled, I see. Congratulations. Waylon nodded. Thank you for your wish, Miss Holland. 
Of course, Cam and I would be very happy if you could attend our wedding. Just when Minzy was about to say something, a bespectacled man with a gentle face came out. Minzy, are they your friends? Minzy nodded. Cameron asked. He is. He's, my fiancé. He's a lawyer, Minzy replied with a smile. The man smiled and nodded at them. Nice to meet you. Waylon replied to him with a nod, and Cameron seemed a bit surprised to find out that Minzy had a fiancé. We need to go first, Minzy said, leaving with her fiancé. Cameron watched as they slowly disappeared from her vision and said, I can't believe that she's engaged. Wrapping his arm around her shoulders, Waylon said, isn't that a good thing? Cameron crossed her arms in front of her chest. I thought she hadn't gotten over you yet. Well, I won't give her a chance since I already have a wife. He chuckled. Cameron stopped in her tracks and turned around to look at him. I'm hungry. I thought all women have a bad appetite. It seems like I was wrong, said Waylon. The next day, they returned to Bassburg from the Concords. Waylon made a call to Morrison and asked if he was still in Bassburg or not. Not long after the call, Morrison met with him in a restaurant. I thought you were not coming back anymore. I didn't expect you to come back so soon. Waylon took a sip of coffee and said, I have never said before that I'm not coming back. He sat down on the chair and grinned. Did you see Evelyn when you were there? Was she sad when she learned that you have a wife? Waylon lifted his eyes to look at him. I don't have anything to do with her anymore. I've instructed everyone from the night banquet to stop making any contact with her. Morrison was stunned. What happened? You'll know when you get back, he replied. Morrison ordered a steak and then continued. All right, I won't ask then. But I can more or less guess what happened. There was a high chance that Evelyn had done something to upset him because she refused to accept the truth. After that, he smiled and commented, well, this is what happens when you have too many girls as your friends. Waylon ignored him and said, I have a favor to ask of you. What is it? You're closer to Madame Hera, so I want you to help me get a wedding dress from her. Morrison thought his ears or brain were messing with him. What? You want me to help you get a wedding dress from Madame Hera? Why don't you just buy one? Suddenly, he realized something. Hold on for a second. Why do you need a wedding dress? Are you two having a wedding soon? Yeah, replied Waylon. It isn't about money. I know Madame Hera has a vintage wedding dress from 1980 in her collection. Chapter 2663 Morrison massaged his temple. You must be kidding me. I suggest you drop your thought. Madame Hera would never sell that dress to you. When the Princess of Stoslo got married, she also wanted that dress but Madame Hera refused to sell it. In the end, she had no other choice but to spend $10 million to rent it for one day. Besides, Madame Hera wouldn't simply rent her wedding dress to anyone. A few celebrities wanted to rent the dress from her, but she rejected them. Waylon chuckled and said, Of course, I'm just going to rent it from her. I can offer her any price she wants, and I promise that I'll return the dress to her in one piece. Morrison sucked in air through his teeth. I can't believe that you really are going to spend so much money so that your wife can put on that dress. Even the princess of Stoslo wants to put on the dress, so of course, I'll give my wife the best. Morrison nodded. Fine then. I have always heard people say that a married man is the most irrational. It seems like they're right. He picked up his phone and continued. I'll send a message to her, but I can't guarantee you anything. Waylon squinted. If she doesn't say yes, then it'll be your problem. Morrison jerked his head up. What? Are you threatening me now? He crossed his fingers together and placed his hand on the table. You're very close to her, right? That's my grandmother. I'm not that close to her at all. You're your grandmother's grandson, so I'm sure you'll be able to do it. Morrison was rendered speechless. It seemed to him that Waylon was like an abductor who put a knife to his neck. If he couldn't get the dress for him, he was going to kill him. He took a deep breath. All right, all right, I'll do my best. I'll get the dress for you. As soon as he sent the message, Morrison was stunned. He showed Waylon his phone and said, See, she blacklisted my number. Waylon chuckled. Well, it seems like you're not that close to her either. 
I guess I have to do it myself. Morrison harumphed. She blacklisted me even though I'm my grandmother's grandson. I don't believe that she'll do you the favor and lend you the dress. Madame Hara picked up her phone, and Waylon said, I'll return to Stoslo tomorrow, and I hope to pay you a visit. She said something in return, and Waylon smiled. Sure, I will. Morrison couldn't come around to his senses even after Waylon had ended the call. After a short while, he snapped back to his senses and said, I thought you were going to ask her for the wedding dress. Waylon lifted his head to look at him. Do you think I'm stupid like you? It'll show that I don't have any sincerity at all if I mention it on the phone. He took a deep breath and said through gritted teeth, Then why did you ask me to send her the message? Waylon smiled, Well, thanks to you, I now know what I should do. Morrison was completely speechless. He couldn't believe that Waylon would set him up. People always said that the nail that stuck up mostly got hammered down, and apparently, he was the nail this time. However, there was nothing he could do about it. There was no way he could beat Waylon when it came to manipulation. You're going back to Stoslo for a wedding dress. What if she? There is no, what if, in my dictionary. I'll get the dress, Waylon said calmly and confidently. The next day, Morrison sent Waylon to the airport with Cameron. How long are you going back this time? She asked. Waylon turned around to look at her and caressed her cheek. Only for a few days. She squinted. Why can't I come with you? Waylon chuckled and lowered his head. You're pregnant, so I don't want you to get too tired. Besides, this is something very important to our wedding. Cameron raised her head. All right, then. Waylon kissed her lips. Wait for me. After that, he turned around and went to the airport. Cameron watched as he slowly disappeared into the crowd. Chapter 2664 Morrison rolled his window down and said, Don't worry, Cam. Wayne will only be gone for a few days. Cone, I'll drive you home. Cameron went back into the car and looked at Morrison. Do you have any idea what he went back for? Morrison looked at her through the rear mirror. A hint of amusement crossed his eyes as he said, I'm not going to lie to you. The reason Wayne is heading back to Stoslo this time is to borrow a wedding dress from someone. Even though Waylon had told him to help him keep the secret from Cameron, he decided to tell her to get back at him for tricking him last time at the restaurant. Cameron was dumbfounded. Lend a wedding dress. Why doesn't he buy one instead? Why does he have to borrow one? He has his eyes set on a vintage-style wedding dress, and it's not a guarantee that he'll be able to get it. After all, getting the person to lend him the dress is not an easy task. When the princess of Stoslo got married last time, she spent $10 million to rent it for one day. Cameron was shocked. $10 million for a day. Morrison nodded. Yes, the wedding dress requires a high maintenance cost. Let alone it's the princess who rented it. Wayne really is going to spend a lot of money this time. Cameron was slightly stunned. That's why he said it's very important to our wedding. So, he went back to Stoslo just to borrow a wedding dress for me. She frowned and wrapped her arms in front of her chest. Is he stupid? Morrison clicked his tongue and said, Well, isn't it normal for a man to spend some money for his wife? Besides, he's rich. A few million dollars are nothing for him. Cameron did not say anything. After a short while, she told Morrison to send her to the Martial Arts Center. Morrison asked, What are you going there for? I know the people there. Don't ask so much, and just send me there. Morrison stopped the car in front of the Martial Arts Center. Cameron got out of the car, and Mahina, who was working in the hall, saw her and greeted her. Miss. Cameron closed the door and went into the building with Mahina. When Morrison saw them walk into the Martial Arts Center, he was puzzled. This Martial Arts Center belongs to Cam. No wonder even Damon said that she's very good at fighting. The next day, at Stoslo, Waylon drove the SUV alone to Madame Hara's place in the suburbs. Madame Hara was more of an Arcadian and did not enjoy the hustle and bustle of life in the big city. Therefore, she moved away from the city to the suburbs a few dozen kilometers away. Even though the snow on the road had been cleared, the road was still wet and slippery due to the snowfall some days ago. His phone rang. Waylon took a look at his phone and realized it was a call from Damon. 
He answered the call and said, What's the matter? Where are you right now, Master Wayne? We just caught someone suspicious in the garage. He frowned. I'm on my way to Madame Hera's place. Who is that guy? We don't know him, but he said someone instructed him to do something on the SUV. Which car are you driving now, Master Wayne? Waylon froze. He applied the brakes subconsciously, but nothing happened. It seemed like someone had cut the brake controller. At the same time, a truck appeared in front of him. Just when he was about to hit the truck head-on, Waylon jerked the steering wheel, and the car veered off the road. As the doctor rushed to the ER with the stretcher cart, Damon yelled at those in the way, get out of the way. Waylon was wearing an oxygen mask, and his face was filled with blood. The door to the ER slammed shut, and the red light came on. Damon punched the wall in anger, and the others who came after him stopped in their tracks, their faces full of shock. One of them came forward and asked, How is Master Wayne? Damon replied dejectedly, I was too late. Master Wayne is seriously injured. Chapter 2665 Damon suddenly thought of something and grabbed the man. Where is that guy? He's still in the garage. We're currently interrogating him. Damon told them to stay back and rushed back to the garage himself. The man was tied to a chair inside the garage. Two men were interrogating him, but he refused to say a single thing. Damon walked in and punched him in the face, sending him and his chair rolling on the floor. Damon, the rest of the people hastily went forward to stop him. Damon pushed them away and kicked the man on the ground to vent his anger on him. The man was wailing on the ground in pain, and there was blood lining the corner of his lips. To prevent Damon from killing him, two men came forward and stopped him. Stop it, you'll kill him. Damon flung them away and grabbed the man up from the ground, his eyes red with anger. Who instructed you to do that? The man coughed a few times, and his face was contorted with pain. I dare you all to kill me. Damon pulled his gun out and pointed it at his head. Another man stepped in and said, Damon, calm down, we won't be able to find out who's behind him if you kill him now. After a long while, Damon took a deep breath and put his gun away. I'll make sure your death will be a painful one. The doctors in the hospital were doing their best to save Waylon, while the rest of the people outside were anxious. Then, someone received a call from Morrison. He hesitated for a while before accepting the call. Morrison asked, why didn't Damon and Wayne answer my call? What happened to them? Madame Hera had called him and said that Waylon had not shown up after she had waited for a long time. He did not think that Waylon was someone who would stand someone up. When he tried to call Waylon and Damon, he couldn't get through to either of them. Therefore, he could only call someone else. The man leaned on the wall and said with a stern face, Master Wayne is. Morrison realized something was not right and frowned. What happened to him? The man gnashed his teeth and said, Someone tampered with Master Wayne's car. He got into a car accident and was seriously injured. Morrison was stunned. At Emperor, Cameron felt that someone was sitting next to her when she was sleeping. She opened her eyes slowly and saw Waylon. Wayne, when did you come back? Waylon did not say anything and just stroked her face with his hand. Cameron wanted to get up but couldn't. Her eyelids felt heavy and she soon fell asleep again. After some time had passed, she heard someone knock on the door. She got up to open the door, and her maid was standing outside the door. Ma'am, you've been sleeping for a long time. Do you want to go downstairs and eat something? She rubbed her temples and asked, What time is it now? The maid replied with a smile, It's eleven now. Cameron was stunned. She did not expect to sleep for so long. She followed the maid downstairs to get something to eat. Suddenly, she thought of something and asked, Oh yeah, has Wayne come back already? The maid replied, Not yet. Master Wayne is still in Stoslow, isn't he? Oh yeah, I've forgotten about that. Cameron laughed awkwardly. Wayne just went to Stoslow yesterday. There was no way he could come back so soon, so apparently, she was having a dream earlier. It was just that the dream felt so real. It really felt as if he had come back and sat right next to her. Cameron pulled her phone out to send a message to Waylon. However, he did not reply to her after a long while. Maybe he's busy, 
She put her phone down and continued to eat her food. Meanwhile, at the Goldman Mansion. What? How did Wayne get into an accident? What happened? Maisie asked Morrison. Morrison replied with, his head held low. I'm sorry, Mr. and Mrs. Goldman. I didn't know about that either. Wayne said he was going to Stoslo to borrow Madame Hare's wedding dress. I just learned that he got into a car accident today. Chapter 2666 After saying that, Morrison could not help but blame himself. I should have persuaded him not to go there alone. Maisie staggered backward, and Nolan supported her. Nolan then looked at Morrison with a serious expression. How is he doing now? Morrison replied, he's still in the operation theater. They said that his injuries are grave and he needs an operation. What happened to Wayne? Colton was standing in the entryway and just so happened to overhear what they were saying. Morrison turned, saw Colton, and was stunned for a moment. Is that Wayne's younger brother? The resemblance is uncanny. Colton walked over. Dad, I'll travel to Stoslo. Wayne got into an accident. I can't just sit here and watch from the sideline without doing anything. Nolan responded, I'll go with you. I have to take a look at your brother's condition. No matter what, we must get to the hospital to ensure that he gets out of danger. Colton went upstairs to pack his luggage, and Nolan grabbed Maisie's hand. See, I might have to leave for a bit. Maisie nodded. Go, and please come back home safely. Nolan hugged her. Don't worry, I'll bring our sons back safely. Colton came downstairs and left with Nolan. When Morrison was about to leave too, Maisie voiced out to stop him and said, I'm leaving them to you already. In the training center, Cameron looked a little absent-minded. She had not received a reply from Waylon for one whole day. Seeing her staring at her phone in a daze, Mahina walked over with a smile. Cam, are you thinking about Mr. Goldman? No, she put the phone away. Mahina sat down right next to her. You're already pregnant with Mr. Goldman's child, so why can't you miss him? There's no need to hide that. Cameron gave her a sideways glance. I realize that you've become much more talkative since you moved and started working here. You've picked up a bad habit or two from these guys, haven't you? She giggled and said nothing. Cameron lowered her gaze. Frankly speaking, I really miss him, but he's only gone abroad for a day. Mahina was startled. Why did Mr. Goldman go abroad? Cameron explained, it's for our wedding ceremony's sake. Mahina chuckled. Mr. Goldman really does treat you very well. It's no wonder Mr. Southern could leave you to him with peace of mind. Cameron did not utter a word. Wayne does treat me very well, so well that I've gotten used to his presence. The next day, in the ICU in Stoslo, Waylon was lying on the hospital bed, still in a coma. And Damon came in with Nolan. Master Goldman, Master Wayne has been in a coma since he got out of the surgical procedure yesterday afternoon. Nolan walked up to the bedside. Seeing how his son looked, he could not help but feel deeply distressed. What did the doctor say? The doctor said that he broke a few ribs, and they pierced his lungs, causing a severe pneumothorax. It took two different operations just to save his life. He's also received three stitches on his forehead, but it's fortunate that he's not suffering from a head injury. He should be able to wake up in just a few days. Nolan's gaze turned gloomy. Damon added, we've caught the culprit who tampered with the car, but he refuses to reveal who's behind the incident. Nolan turned to look at Damon, does my grandfather know about this? Damon lowered his head, we don't dare to tell him yet. Nolan nodded, get the police to let that person go. Damon was shocked. But Master Goldman, letting him go is the only way we can find out who's behind him. Just send someone to keep an eye on him from the shadows so as not to startle the person behind the curtains. Damon froze for a few seconds, then nodded. Understood. When Damon was about to leave, Nolan stopped him and said calmly, I'll get Coleman to take over Wayne's identity for the time being. If the other party wants to kill Wayne, They'll probably attack again as soon as they learn that he's been discharged from the hospital. Damon nodded. We'll work together with Master Coleman. On the other side of the town, inside the villa, Colton used concealer to cover up the mole at the corner of his eye and slightly modified his skin's complexion to make himself look like his elder brother too. 
Chapter 2667 After changing into Waylon's clothes, Colton shocked Morrison when he came out of the room. Jesus, you look exactly the same. The twins already look very similar, but they're almost identical with some slight changes. Colton straightened his coat. Let's go to the hospital. Morrison nodded. Okay. At noon, Colton pretended to be Waylon and got discharged from the hospital under Damon and Morrison's protection. Damon opened the car door for him, and after Colton got into the car, Morrison and Damon got into the driver and front passenger seats. After the car drove away, a man hiding not far away looked astonished, and he could not help but frown. How is this possible? His injuries were so serious. He thought of something and immediately called someone. Wayne Goldman has already been discharged from the hospital. His injuries seem to be fake. In the same town, in a hotel suite, a young man hung up the call, threw his phone aside, and glared at the middle-aged man standing next to him. Are you sure he's been seriously wounded? I, I'm sure. He was covered in blood when he got carried out of the car, the middle-aged man replied tremblingly. The man frowned. Then how could he be allowed to discharge from the hospital today? It must be a fraud. Go to the hospital and ask for more information. As soon as the middle-aged man walked out of the suite, he saw Evelyn standing at the door and was stunned. Miss Woods. Evelyn pushed him away, entered through the door, and stared at the man in disbelief. Jamie Ramsey, what do you think you're doing? Have you lost your mind? Jamie walked to the couch, sat down, raised his wine glass, and swayed it. I'm doing this for you, Evelyn. Just what do you like about that bastard? He's not even taking you seriously. Naturally, I must do something about him humiliating you the other day. Evelyn stepped back subconsciously. Jamie, do you know what would happen to you if they were to get to the bottom of the incident? Why would I worry about that? Or are you planning to sell me out? Jamie got up and walked toward Evelyn. Everything I did, I did for you. Jamie, he took Evelyn into his arms. I don't want to be your backup anymore, Evelyn. I'll give you everything you want, and I'll prove to you that I'm more reliable than Wayne. Two days later, Evelyn went to the villa to visit Waylon, but Damon stopped her at the door without showing her any respect. Miss Woods, have you forgotten what Master Wayne said before this? I, I heard that Willie got into a car accident, so I wish to come over and visit him. Damon frowned. How do you know Master Wayne got involved in a car accident? Evelyn was astounded and quickly explained herself. I only heard it from the rumors. Who did you hear that from? Master Wayne has forbidden everyone from the night banquet from getting into contact with Evelyn, so it's impossible for someone from the night banquet to tell her about the accident. Seeing that Damon was coming after her for an answer so aggressively, Evelyn's eyes turned bloodshot out of anxiousness. We've known each other for so many years. Is it really necessary for you to question me like I'm a criminal? Damon was about to say something when a figure appeared from inside the villa. What's the matter? Damon turned sideways and looked at Colton. It's, Miss Woods. He had forgotten that the person standing in front of him was Colton, and he was a little worried that Evelyn would find out that he was not Waylon. Colton was expressionless. What's the matter? Evelyn stared at the man standing in front of her and felt that he seemed to be a different person, but he also seemed to be the same at the same time. Willie, I was worried about you, so I've come to see you. Colton probably guessed that this woman had a thing for Waylon and took a glance at Damon, who was also trying to hint at him. He smiled. I don't think I'm in a condition where I need you to worry about me. Evelyn was stunned, but before she could speak again, Colton had already turned to Damon and said, just ask her to leave. Chapter 2668. Damon nodded and blocked Evelyn's sight. Miss Woods, I'm sorry, but Master Wayne doesn't want to see you. Evelyn left the villa in frustration. She got into the car and could not help but clench her hands. If he had treated me better, I might have told him about Jamie's scheme. I really didn't expect him to be this ruthless. In the villa, Colton sat down on the couch with a cup of coffee. Has that woman been pestering Wayne all this time? Damon replied, not really, but we all know that Miss Woods has always taken a fancy to Master Wayne. When Master Wayne brought his wife here last time, 
She actually did something that made Master Wayne ban her from the night banquet. Colton drank the coffee slowly. Then how did she know about Wayne's accident? I want to know that too. Could it be Morrison? After all, Morrison still doesn't know what Miss Woods did, and he's rather close to Miss Woods. Damon wondered if Morrison had blown the gaff. Colton shook his head. Morrison knows about our plan, so it shouldn't be him. Damon struggled to get to the bottom of the issue. Then who could it be? At the hospital, Nolan transferred Wayne to another hospital secretly. Apart from the director, no one else in the hospital knew about it, and he had been told to remain silent about the transfer. The hospital did not want to get involved, so it was only natural for them not to dare to spill too much about the matter. The confidentiality of a private hospital was very strict too. So although the hospitalization costs were high, at least it was safe. Nolan had been staying by the hospital bed and had hardly slept well for two days. He felt something move when he closed his eyes to rest for a short while. When he opened his eyes, he saw Waylon frowning, and his dry lips opened and closed as if he was saying something. Nolan leaned over to take a closer look at him. Wayne. At this time, Waylon slowly opened his eyes, but his throat was dry. Dad. Nolan breathed a sigh of relief. You've finally woken up. You've been in a coma for nearly four days. Waylon looked around at the unfamiliar environment. Where am I? You're in a private hospital. You've been seriously injured, and you need to rest well. Nolan patted the back of his hand lightly. Cole has taken over your identity, so you don't have to worry about it for now. Waylon frowned. Cam doesn't know about this, does she? Nolan lowered his gaze. We haven't told her anything. Your mom is afraid of scaring her. Since you're no longer in danger and have already woken up, you should explain to her when the time comes. Waylon nodded. Master Goldman, Damon stepped into the ward and laughed when he saw Waylon. Master Wayne, you've woken up. Nolan dragged him back onto the topic. What's the problem? Damon replied, someone came to the hospital to inquire about Master Wayne's injuries and condition. And since you asked me to send someone to follow that fella, I did so, and we've found something. Nolan frowned. What's that? That man was indeed reporting something to someone. Although the person who hired him didn't show up, he went to the bank to withdraw money. Thus, he has probably been hired to do something. Nolan's gaze dimmed. There should be transaction records in the bank. Take it to the police for further investigation. Damon nodded. Understood. Meanwhile, after the man got his payment, he went straight to the casino to gamble with his hard-earned money. Probably because he was lucky and won a lot of games, the man stayed in the casino for three days in a row. Damon walked up behind him with a few police officers and patted him on the shoulder. The man turned his head, and as soon as he saw the police, the joy of winning in the casino gradually disappeared from his face. At the precinct, facing the evidence that the police presented, the man refused to confess until Nolan appeared outside the interrogation room. Chapter 2669 Damon walked over. Master Goldman, Nolan whispered something in his ear, and Damon went into the interrogation room and talked to the police officer. The police officer nodded and looked at the man. It doesn't matter now, even if you don't want to talk because someone has already identified you. The man refused to believe it. That's impossible. The police officer took the tablet from Damon's hand and placed it right in front of the man. Does this man look familiar to you? The man froze immediately. He had been caught speaking with a middle-aged man in a parking lot. But I was extremely cautious with everything I did. The officer added at this time, I think the person planning everything behind you has to abandon at least one of you, so he can only sacrifice you in order to protect himself. Anyway, since you're willing to take up this responsibility, we can just let him go now, can't we? Just when the police officers were about to send someone in to convey the message, the man finally spoke. It's Jamie Ramsey. He's the one who ordered me to do so. Back in Bassburg, Cameron leaned on the couch with her legs crossed, feeling rather depressed, and her gaze was fixed on the blacked-out phone screen. He hasn't answered any of my calls or replied to any of my messages. What is he trying to achieve here? Or did something happen to him? Thinking of this, Cameron got up instantly and was about to go out. 
The housekeeper called to her. Young lady, where are you going? She stood in the entryway and changed into her shoes. I'm heading out for a bit. As soon as she opened the door, she saw Maisie standing outside the door and got astounded for a split second. It's you, Mysis Goldman. Maisie smiled. Are you going out? Ah, uh, I... Cameron pursed her lips and finally asked. Mysis Goldman, did something happen to Wayne? Maisie frowned and continued. Let's go inside for a talk. Cameron finally felt that something was wrong. When she returned to her senses and got back into the living room, Maisie was already sitting on the couch. I've come here this time to inform you about Wayne's condition. I know that you're definitely worried about him. Cameron stepped forward. What happened to him? He got into an accident abroad and had to undergo surgery a few days ago. Don't worry. I just got the news that he has regained consciousness. There was an accident, and surgical procedures were performed. I can imagine how serious it was. Cameron clenched her hands. How could this be? His father and Cole are both in Stoslo now, and they'll investigate everything and get to the bottom of the incident. As for Wayne, I'm sorry for not notifying you immediately. I didn't do so because I believe that he wouldn't want you to worry, and that's why he wouldn't let you know about it too. Cameron lowered her gaze. If I had known earlier that this would happen, I would have stopped him from going back to Stoslo. If he hadn't gone back to Stoslo, perhaps he wouldn't have encountered such an incident. Maisie got up and walked up to her. Cam, I know that you're worried about him now, but Wayne cares about you very much, so he doesn't want his affairs to affect you. After saying that, she placed her hand on Cameron's shoulder. All you need to do now is wait for him to come back to Zilakova. You must have faith in him. The next day, Colton visited Waylon in the hospital. Waylon sat on the head of the bed, and his complexion looked a little better than yesterday. Wayne, how do you feel now? Wayne chuckled. It's nothing serious, don't worry. He nodded and then asked, Do you know someone by the name of Jamie Ramsey? Jamie. Waylon frowned slightly. Does this matter have something to do with him? Colton explained. The culprit has already confessed that Jamie is the person who gave him the orders. Waylon remained silent for a while. I don't know him too well, but why would he attack me? Colton shook his head too. Morrison walked in at this time. After all the investigations, it's Jamie Ramsey. Waylon looked at Morrison, who was standing outside the door, and was stunned for a split second. Do you know him very well? Not very well, but I know him. He courted Evelyn back then but she had always had a thing for you. So, I, guess he wants to take revenge on you because of this. Chapter 2670 Waylon's expression turned cold and stern. He's taking revenge on me for this. Anyway, that bastard truly didn't like you to begin with. Now that we're sure he's behind all these shenanigans, he's not getting away from us. At that time, Jamie, who was staying in the hotel, still did not know that he had been exposed. After getting it on with Evelyn, he comforted her. Don't worry, since he's been treating you so heartlessly, I'll surely teach him a lesson for you. Evelyn turned her back to him and remained silent. Hearing the doorbell ring, Jamie thought his men had returned, so he wrapped himself in a bathrobe and got out of bed to open the door. Damon kicked him down before he could clearly see who the person standing outside was. Damon then broke into the room with his men, and Colton came in after him still playing the role of Waylon. Evelyn's expression froze, and she covered herself with the quilt. Wee Willie. When Damon saw that the two of them were hanging out together, his expression became even more displeased. Are you two really in this together? No, it's not. Evelyn wanted to explain something, but Colton refused to even take a glance at her. Jamie stood up from the floor and glared at Colton. You found me so soon. Wayne Goldman, your injuries did heal very quickly, didn't they? He was extremely wounded when he got carried out of the car, covered in blood, so even if he was lucky enough to survive the accident, he would still have to be bedridden for a while. But he's now standing in front of me, seemingly unscathed. Colton scoffed and said with disdain beaming from the bottom of his eyes, are you surprised? It's a pity that the person you hired has sold you out. Jamie's face became gloomier. I should have asked them to crash your car, even if it were to turn you into a cripple. Damon punched the arrogant man to the floor. 
Jamie wiped the blood from the corner of his lips and got up from the floor. Is that all you have? I dare you to hit me to death right here, right now. As Damon was about to strike him with another punch, Colton lifted his hand and stopped him. There's no need for you to waste more energy on such a piece of trash, lest others think we're bullying the weak here. Jamie was enraged. Who are you deeming weak? Isn't it obvious that I'm referring to you? You look just like a weak man now. Do you think you can seek justice for that woman in the bed? Or do you think I care about her? You claim that you plan to teach me a lesson for her. Just who do you think you are? Shut up, you bastard. You're not allowed to humiliate Evelyn. So what if I'm humiliating her? Doesn't she know that I'm already married? But she still chooses to cling to me. And all of us now know that she's climbed onto your bed without any hesitation, but at the same time, still pretended to be in love with me. I mean, even I'm sick of her. He said this on behalf of his elder brother. Colton's words made Evelyn's face turn pale in an instant. The Willie I know would never humiliate me with such words. Jamie was so angry that he wanted to make a move on Colton, but before he could get his hands on him, he had already been pinned down by Damon and the others. He struggled, resisted, and roared, Wayne. Goldman, I dare you to come at me. Don't worry, I don't plan to let you go at all. Whether you live or die has nothing to do with me. I would have killed you by now if the law didn't forbid me from doing so. Plus, it'd be an easy way out for you, so an extra reason for me not to end you here. Colton turned around. If you have anything else to say, save it for when we get to the precinct. He then left with his men. Jamie was also taken away. Evelyn was stunned on. The bed as her heart had already been humiliated in smithereens. At Madame Hara's villa in the suburbs. Morrison deliberately came over to explain to Madame Hara about the accident that Waylon had gotten into. Madame Hara sat in the corner, arranging some flowers, and nodded. I already know that. 